significant TV, significant stories, significant entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Fran McNeil, and joining me in the studio are two individuals from Roar for Good. Who are they? Well, let's find out. First, in the red chair is Yasmin Mustafa, and she is CEO and founder of Roar for Good. And in the blue chair is Anthony Gold, co-founder of Roar for Good. So, entrepreneurially speaking, and of course with curiosity, why the name Roar for Good and why the purple shirts? <laughs> so we came up with a name after, we came up with the idea. So the, the, the name came after the idea and the idea was to build a company that empowers women. Mm -hmm. And Roar, if you've heard of those songs, I Am Women Hear Me Roar or Katy Absolutely. Perry's Roar. That's my generation, I Am Woman yep. Hear Me Roar. <laughs> I mean, that is totally, okay. It was a great fit both with the concept of the company, the Athena, the device that we're building, and when we we actually heard Katy Perry's song on the radio when we we're trying to come up with a name, we said, this is it, and then we added the four good because we're a social impact mm -hmm. company and we wanna, we wanna change the world. Changing the world with Athena. It's, it's an interesting blend of literally old fashion in terms of what helped establish kind of the world definitions and very modern concepts. Um, how did you do that? How did you do that? And Anthony, how did you get involved with a woman's company, so to speak? Well, it's a great question, but first of all, I'm really glad that you were looking at Yasmin when you said old concepts <laughs> and not at me when you said that, so I appreciate that. Um, briefly, Yasmin and I probably met maybe eight or nine years ago. I was brought in to run a healthcare company, and she was doing some marketing consulting work for that, for that firm. And my first interactions with her, I knew right away she had all these entrepreneurial ideas. She had this passion, this desire to really want to change the world and make a huge difference, and I knew this woman is going to accomplish some amazing things. And she had some great ideas um, mm -hmm. that she, you just knew were going to come to fruition. And we became just fast friends then and have been friends ever since. And I was an advisor for her last company mm -hmm. um, that she built. But when you hear the backstory, Yasmin's story of how she came up with the idea for Roar for Good, when she came back and presented the idea to me, it was just so obvious that we needed to do something to do that. And as far as, yeah, a woman's company, um, I've always um, been a, a proponent of the, of the underdog, and um, and I grew up in the technology world, and I worked for Unisys for many years, mm -hmm. and it was such a predominantly male company, and it was mm -hmm. so rare to have women e engineers, and even rare for the, the women engineers to be promoted into leadership roles, and I just thought that was so unfair, and and so from you know when I was there, I started really looking at what could I do to help help make more of a difference, and both Yasmin and I, for instance. We helped a dear friend of ours, Tracy Wilson Rossman, start a, an organization called Tech Girls. It's focused on promoting technology to middle school girls. And and Yasmin co-founded or co-founded. She started Girl Develop at Philadelphia to help mm -hmm. women learn how to code. And she asked me to come in and teach all the leadership, the the career classes for them. So for many many years, we've been involved in in doing initiatives like that. And when you hear the story behind Roar, it was just there's no way that I couldn't be a part of it and help her. To, to do something that, that is amazing and has the potential to make such a difference. He does more yes. than help. <laughs> okay, well good, well good. Tell us more about the backstory. Just a wonderful collaboration here. This yeah. is like ping pong. So, and it's your turn now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so so after my last company in which, it, which Anthony was an advisor for, it, it got sold in late 2011. Mm -hmm. And I had a, a little bit of break and I decided to go get my citizenship. Uh, it was around the time when I finally could. I've been waiting for a very long time to do so. And when I got it, I got it on April 19th, 2012 at 10.39 a.m. Uh, I immediately started thinking, what could I do now that I have this status? Because for a long time, I couldn't, I couldn't travel. I was worried really? about traveling. I was worried about getting deported and, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I started planning a trip. And to me, it was a reward for all the hardships Mm -hmm. And also because I've been working since I was nine. I've been working from a very, very young age. And, and at first it was going to be one month, and then two, and then three. And then I just made it a six-month trip. And I decided to go to South America. Mm -hmm. And I went on a solo six-month trip to South America on May 2013. It was actually May 30th that I flew into Ecuador. I did full Spanish immersion for the first month. I stayed with a Spanish family, went to Spanish school, and then I flew to Colombia, and then Argentina, Chile, Bolivia, and Peru. Wow. And it was amazing. I spent about a month in each country. It was life-changing. 
but it was also eye-opening in the fact that everywhere that I went, I just kept meeting women who would share some type of story of a time they had been harassed or mm -hmm. abused or attacked, mm -hmm. and it just kept happening mm -hmm. again and again everywhere that I went. And then a week after I came back, I was living on 13th and Locust uh, downtown, and my neighbor went out to feed her meter when she was grabbed from behind, and dragged into an alley, beaten, and, and brutally assaulted. And when I read the news story the next day, the foundation of the idea came about, and I called up Anthony and told him about it, as he said, and we started together. We banded together to start, to start the company. Mm. And initially, it was what women do now to protect themselves is they use pepper spray and tasers mm -hmm. and knives. And, and the initial idea was to take those tools and make them wearable. Mm -hmm. Because when, when we first had the idea, it was, you know, if you get attacked or assaulted, you're not gonna have it right there in your right. hand. You're gonna right. have to pull it out of your pocket or your purse. So why not make it so it's something that's right there. It's just one button away, one click away. And, and the original concept of Athena was actually the macelet Mm -hmm. which is mace and a bracelet. <laughs> right. That was, uh, um, but then we found out it was a terrible idea and, mm -hmm. and we nixed it and, and we came up with Athena. Mm -hmm. So where is Athena now in terms of production and availability? Because the concept is, is clearly strong. Yeah, so Athena, we named it after the Greek goddess of wisdom, yes. power, and courage. And mm -hmm. it seemed like a very fitting name. I really mm -hmm. like the symbolism there. And we spent about 16 months building it. So we spent mm -hmm. about 16 months making various prototypes, testing them, doing self-defense classes, having women wear them, iterating on it. And we are officially, as of today, about a week away from tooling. So this is where we go into production. Okay. We're manufacturing it in California. Our manufacturer Not is Flex. Pennsylvania? Uh, <laughs> we, I wish we could have. That would have, okay. been, that would have been amazing. I would have loved to have that happen. Yeah, it I would mm -hmm. love to have that happen, and mm -hmm. and we deliver. Uh, we will start delivering about eight thousand units um, that have been pre-ordered in the fall, and mm. um, and yeah, and people can pre-order today on our website. I was just going to say, is it too late to pre-order? No, never too it's, late. It's not too late okay. to pre-order, okay. but mm -hmm. one I think really interesting part of the story, especially from an entrepreneurship perspective, is as Yasmin and I were going through the early stages of developing the idea and coming up with a prototype and doing some of the user testing and these sorts of things. We kept hearing the same stories from people over and over, which is, I would buy one of these. I'd buy it for myself, for my wife, for my sister, for my daughter. Um, and we knew that there was a big difference between people saying that they would buy something right. and them actually pulling out their credit card and making a purchase. Right. And so Yasmin had the idea. She said, you know, why don't we launch a crowdfunding campaign? Because this can help us really validate that there really mm -hmm. is market interest in what mm -hmm. we're doing and that we're on the right path. And we're both big fans of Lean Startup. We, we, we taught a Lean Startup class a couple years ago. So we're big fans of basically ensuring that our passions and what we're building are going to align with what the market needs. Because sure. it, it makes no sense if you're going to build something that no one, it's not going to have the impact that you want. So we, um, we put a lot of work into launching this crowdfunding campaign. It was a one month campaign we did at the end of last year. And our goal was to do $40,000 in pre-orders. That if we could get $40,000 in pre-orders, that then we feel like we have some pretty good tailwinds behind us to do mm -hmm. this. And we're really nervous mm -hmm. when we hit that launch button, launch campaign, and um, we hit $40,000 by the second day. We had $100,000 <laughs> wow. by the 10th day. We ended up doing over $300,000 for the total. It was just a big success. And, and so, yeah, it's a great way to kind of validate that Absolutely. you have something. And we had have had orders now from every state in the U.S. and over 45 countries around the world. 50. 50 countries around, yeah, wow. so it's just a great, a great method for testing that you really have something and, and you know, she is such a, a marketing, you probably don't know this, but Yasmin is, she has quite a marketing gift and mm -hmm. besides being a very good leader and so it was just something that really helped us, you know, kind of launch the, really, the company into the stratosphere is really what, what gave us the, the huge, huge start that we have. I think it's the story more so than the marketing. I think that yeah. people appreciate the story because a big part oh, of what we're doing isn't just building Athena. The reason mm -hmm. we're a social impact company is that we realize that today the onus is always on the women. You know, don't mm -hmm. do this, don't wear that, right, don't go right. here, t buy pepper spray, mm -hmm. don't walk out at night, and mm -hmm. we want to change that. We want to shift that conversation. Mm -hmm. And a big part of what we're doing for that is we're actually taking a percentage of our proceeds and investing them in nonprofits that work with children and teach them empathy. Because what we learned is that there's a direct correlation between lack of empathy and violence and harassment and abuse mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. 
And if you teach kids one of the most impressionable this yes. skill, yes. which is controversial, a lot of people say it's an innate skill, and some people mm -hmm. say no, it's learned. Mm -hmm. Regardless, mm -hmm. empathy is actually decreased year after year. Mm -hmm. So, so that's a big part of, of what we're doing, and really, really excited about the possibilities of where that can go. Mm -hmm. In fact, we're actually a certified B Corporation. So I, I recognize that. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Because that may be a format that, uh, a structure that some entrepreneurs aren't aware of. Mm -hmm. Sure, so, so the idea is that we're a for-profit company, but with a mission. Mm -hmm. And that mission is obviously to do good. And, and so B, B Certification is basically a certification for organizations that have a social mission to have some kind of an impact that impact is both in the world as well as the way they treat their employees, the way they treat the environment, and all these sorts of things. And it's something that when we first learned about B corporations and B certification status, I thought, wow, this is a great model. And companies like Ben and & Jerry's and, mm -hmm. and Tom Shoes and other companies like that that are doing really neat mission-driven things. And when we looked into it, we thought this is you know, a natural thing for us to, to be a part of. And it, and it turns out that actually the world's first certified B corporation is, is right here in on the main line, right. and a company called Untours Foundation, which mm -hmm. is just this wonderful organization, and, and they're friends with, with Roar, and, and it really inspired us to, to do that and be a part of it. But getting back to Yasmin's point, I think that message of not just you know, having a product that, that can help in the market, but, but wanting to make that impact, and, and really that idea of, of contributing, especially, especially the amount of impact we want to have, of contributing mm -hmm. for every single Athena that we sell, taking a substantial percentage of those proceeds and investing in those programs that can do that is just is huge and yeah, I think people relate to that. Absolutely. What's next? I mean, I know you've just gotten started. <laughs> and it, you know, 16 months of, what, what do you mean, Fran? What's next? We're, we're like going to launch in, you know, one week. But what's next? I mean, clearly there's momentum building. Yes. Well, shipping is our biggest milestone right now that we mm -hmm. that we see ahead. So we want to start shipping as soon as this fall and mm -hmm. shipping to everyone that pre-ordered and also mm -hmm. making it so that as soon as you order from the website, Athena arrives at your door a few days okay. later. So that's okay. that's our nearest milestone. Mm -hmm. After that, we want to go into Amazon. So have Excellent. our product be available on Amazon so Good. that you can buy it from anywhere in the world. I'm Amazon then, Prime, sorry. Yep. <laughs> me too. Me too. I love Amazon Prime. Except when I actually get that, that charge that one day, you know, it's a hundred bucks. Yeah, Right. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness. Um, and then and then we would go into retail. By mm -hmm. fall of next year, we want to be in stores so that you can walk into a Target or a Best Buy and see Athena on a shelf and pick it up for mm -hmm. your daughter, your wife, your sister, mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. Any yeah. potential collaborations with universities, student centers, those kinds of things? They should call us, whoever's <laughs> watching. Okay, okay. <laughs> I've got some, we can talk offline. I've got some folks who... Oh, that'd be um, great. Already have some inroads there. Yeah, we'd love for to collaborate with with universities and have them buy the mm -hmm. Athena devices. Today, they 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 buy rape whistles mm -hmm. and give them out to freshmen, uh, the freshman class. Instead of doing that, buying Athena devices and mm -hmm. integrating with our mobile app and mm -hmm. and having a higher tech version um, to to give away to their to their students. Right. Well, there's a question that I want to ask, and it's really directed towards you, Yasmin. Um, it is significant that you are a woman-owned business. And as a woman-owned business, and as a woman, a younger woman owning a business, you actually sort of are carrying the mantle and being a representative for other entrepreneurs, whether they're in high school, in college, and also for women in their 50s and, and above. Um, how do you view that responsibility? To believe it or not, I don't think about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like I'm doing what I'm doing because I have to do what I'm doing, uh, mm -hmm. and and I really enjoy what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. uh, so I do get a lot of emails and requests to speak at high schools and colleges mm -hmm. and different organizations, and I am honored when when those come my way, and and especially afterwards when I get an email or a message from someone saying, "Hey, this really inspired me. This this really touched me." Uh, I do I do think that. There aren't enough women leaders, mm -hmm. and and when you see one, uh, I think it's really important that to remember that representation matters, right? Like if yes. if you see more women as leaders, you start thinking of yourself as a leader and the possibility of having of being a leader yourself. Mm -hmm. So so to have you know Hillary Clinton give the speech that she gave and accepting the nomination at the Democratic National Convention, I think that was a huge moment for mm -hmm. girls and women everywhere, and right. and it's exciting. It's exciting to see 
there being a conversation had about it and people understanding why it matters so much. Because when you have diversity, you can make a huge impact in not just society, but in business and having mm -hmm. better, coming up with better products, coming up with better decisions. Even there's there's been studies that show that diversity leads to more revenue. So that's true. Yeah. It's, that's it's, true. It's, it's incredible. It's a definite connection. Well, I know that people want to connect with you. Would you share your website again and um, sure. remind them that they can pre-order mm -hmm. already? <laughs> <laughs> so our website is Roar for Good, R-O-A-R-F-O-R-G-O-O-D, and you can order directly right on our site at Roar for Good. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's really exciting, the potential that, that we have to, uh, to touch lives. And you know, on the one hand, we're excited by how much momentum we have, and the same time, we're very humbled by the responsibility that we have because you know it's not a fun space that we're in but it's a necessary space and you know nothing would make Yasmin and I happier than for there not to be a need for products mm -hmm. like Athena and companies like Roar but until then our whole focus is what can we do to help make a difference and, and really empower women empower everyone and reduce assaults. Excellent and Yasmin we are out of time but I am obliged to give you the last word. Yeah. Your final <laughs> thoughts <laughs> regarding Boar for Good, just to wrap up the show. Um, final thoughts, oh mm -hmm. man. Um, oh my God, so much pressure. I don't know, I feel <laughs> hot all of a sudden. <laughs> uh, final thoughts. Um, we're hiring, can I mention that? Oh, definitely. Yeah, so we're definitely. hiring. We're hiring from a mechanical engineer, a customer support person, and for I'm a supply watching. chain person as well. Mm -hmm. So if anybody out there, especially in the Philadelphia area, that's looking for any of those positions, please come. Let's talk. Okay. I uh, would love to talk to you. Terrific. Significant stories, significant entrepreneurs, and significant growth in an area that makes a difference for women and for our communities. A B Corp that is doing good and is doing well. Our guests today, Yasmin Listaba and Anthony Gold. Join us again as we share significant stories.